it, you touched on something, uh, Isaac, that that you know we're struggling to to get a bead uh, of um, a bead on, and that and that is, you know, as these services evolve, bandwidth management, like you talked about, ensuring that there's priority or committed bandwidth for certain applications uh, at the at the cost of others traffic shaping effectively um, you know either in the network itself or uh, at the um, at the client side you know in the home to make sure that the right applications real-time communication versus downloads and you know adaptive bit rate can can drop down so long as the health uh, applications are working or the school uh, you know school from home applications are working and and you know we're we're largely providing um, connectivity uh, for these types of applications in a purely over-the-top model. Um, we're not sure that in the full fiber world, just how much bandwidth, like there's just so much bandwidth, it's not congested yet. Um, and so, you know, the need for some of the traffic shaping and tra traffic prioritization capabilities, um, either, you know, in the network, um, you know, used by the operator or at, at the home as configured, you know, uh, at the router level with, with, with the client. We're, we're not sure just how important that's going to be and whether we should be investing in that uh, more or not, because, you know, sort of infinite bandwidth feels like, you know, the stuff just works um, versus, you know, prior days where you had busy hour and you had mm -hmm. to start to uh, categorize your traffic and yeah. cap some so other things would work. Um, what do you think, guys? Is, is that something, you know, that is a differentiator for operators and, and maybe for customers uh, if they're able to control it themselves? I mean, Brent, if I might respond to that. I, I, our, our market, I think, is still working out what the internet can do, particularly the, the target market we're going after with our, our prepaid per day model. What we have realized, though, is that people do want these services. They do want you know, e-health, um, ed-tech, streaming services for entertainment and, and so on. But they're not, just like they can't prepay their bandwidth each month up front, they can't pay for those services um, up front either. So what we're realizing is is we've now got a wallet on one hand and a network effectively digital distribution on the other. And a number of these services, including some well-known streaming services, have come to us to say, look, can we distribute our products over you. Of course you can at an over the top level, but they can't sort out the payment side of that. So that's where our wallet comes in. And we're now trying to work with some of these operators on a per day model. So if you buy your internet per day, can you add a, a day of streaming or can you add a e-health appointment or can you add a school lesson? And um, Nick, I, I, I guess that speaks to some of the innovation and, and Brad, I'm not sure it really answers your question, but our market's not really even asking questions yet around, well, if I buy a day of e-health, does it get prioritized over Netflix, for example? I, it's it's not something that's there. It's, I'm sure in time it will evolve. But it certainly does. It, you know, it's, For me, it's fascinating to see how these things evolve when you when you, when you you start to think a bit differently about how you take stuff to market. Yeah. So um, very different market situation. But I think, uh, you know, in the... In, in markets where you actually can buy all the newest stuff, I think history has a way of uh, proving that the capacity that is there will be used. I mean, we had, you know, when I grew up, we had a black and white TV even. I, I, I know I'm older than I, than I look. Uh, and I mean, I had one too. You you remember the twenty eight eight, the dial up, the ear, the sound. Oh, of definitely, the yeah. But I mean, back then, what was out there, you could do. And then you know, uh, higher speeds came, and uh, you know, applications came. Remember, that... we thought a T one was fast. Yeah, yeah. no, but that <laughs> again, four uh, K TV. Wow, this is like you know, reality. Nothing is ever gonna be better. Now you have eight K TV, and you know. What will happen in the future? It's a virtual reality when you see an entire world around you, and and the bandwidth uh, needed to do that that is even more than we can imagine today. So I I I don't know. I don't know. It's funny Brad, what Brad but... says. AK AK's marketing, but it's like you know, AK could be could be filled up for eight gig. Sorry, eight, eight gig. AK. Yeah. Well, yeah, VR. You know, that's a lot yeah. of uh, that's a lot of concurrent you know images. 
um, for so, sure. So no, I I, I, I think uh, it's very hard. I'm not. Uh, I don't have an answer for you, Brad, on your on your question there. But I it it tends to be used. Whatever capacities there tends to be used by something. Someone right. will come up with something. 